Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to a new edition of the Daily Debate. In tonight's show we're going to be looking at the industrial sector. We're going to be looking at the localization of industries also shedding light on the START National Initiative. We're going to be looking at that, looking at technology, ICT, small and medium enterprises and startups. All this coming up in tonight's edition of the Daily Debate. But before we start doing that, Let's check out uh, some of the stories making the news today. And we'll start off with uh, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, who instructed today that harbors should receive a comprehensive and integrated development process that spans their geographical surroundings and includes the establishment of nearby logistic zones. The President made his instructions during his meeting with Prime Minister Mustafa Madbouli and Minister of Transportation Kamil Al-Wazir. The head of state... <clears throat> Pardon. The head of state said such an integrated development would expand harbors capacities and boost their abilities to support the Egyptian external trade and the movement of exports and imports, in addition to enhancing Egypt's position as a global and regional logistical hub. President Assisi stressed that nations depend in their advancement on the overall transport systems, including harbors, airports, roads and traffic axes, which are primary driving forces for all state sectors. Presidential spokesman Bassem Radi said the meeting followed up development efforts of harbors and port systems nationwide. Radi said that the harbors development would contribute in doubling local production and offering work opportunities for sectors which depend on the harbors efficiency, especially the industry and agriculture. The meeting tackled developments in the harbors of Alexandria, Eastern Port Said, and Elaine Sukhna. Now, Arab League Chief Ahmed Abul Ghait received the Libyan head of the Presidential Council, Mohammed El Minfi in the league's headquarters in Cairo on Tuesday. The meeting discussed the latest developments in Libya and efforts to settle the crisis. Abu Ghait held an expanded meeting with Al Menfi and the accompanying delegation with the presence of the Arab League's permanent members. These were a couple of the stories making the news today, but now focusing on tonight's topic, uh, let's check out this report regarding the START National Initiative that will help in the localization of industries process. Let's check it out and we'll be right back. Start National Initiative supports industry localization. Egypt has launched the Start National Initiative with the aim of supporting and localizing industries to rely on local products and reduce imports amid the current global economic crisis. And within the framework of the government's relentless efforts to support local industries through different measures and procedures, the START initiative worked on eight complete industrial sectors, starting with increasing the value added on agricultural raw materials or on mineral resources and providing professions in order to increase the volume of internal trade. The START initiative has three main goals. The first is to provide job opportunities for a large number of Egyptians by creating fields for small and medium industrial projects, pointing out that a nationwide development initiative of Decent Life Initiative, or Haya Karima, also now provides suitable housing and infrastructure in addition to raising efficiency and readiness of Egyptian villages so that citizens do not have to flee to cities. While Haya Karima addresses the quality of life, START addresses job opportunities as it is working to establish industrial complexes to invest in untapped lands in the Egyptian countryside. In addition to investing in the advantage, the proportion of citizens present in those villages in addition to the establishment of large and medium projects that serve large projects as home appliances and car factories instead of importing products from abroad 
with the aim of reducing the gap between imports and exports and providing production inputs while creating job opportunities for citizens. The second goal of START initiative is to provide part of the import bill through the role played by the aforementioned initiative while the third goal is related to the localization of technology through partnerships with producers who help increase production. This cooperation and partnerships was not happening before because it needed very much cost. The number of industrial projects launched within the START initiative is 64, which are concentrated in the sectors of home appliance, water treatment, and petrochemicals, among others. The initiative is estimated to substitute products that used to be imported at a cost of $16 billion. A lab has been established to assess the quality of products manufactured locally, ensuring they meet international standards. The main features of the initiative are tax exemption for five years and offering lands for investors in the leasing system. The localization of industries within the country is a matter of great urgency, especially after successive global economic crises as coronavirus and the Russian-Ukrainian war in addition to inflation. So there must be local industries that are sufficient for local production and an increase in export to increase provision of hard currency. Egypt has taken great steps that qualify to localize local industries and even attract foreign investments for manufacturing directly within the country and the most important of these steps was liberalizing the exchange rate because the high value of the dollar against local currencies constitute one of the most important reasons that can give the Egyptian products a competitive advantage when entering the global markets. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and we're joined here tonight in the studio by Dr. Mohammed Azem, the board member of the International Association of Technology Management. Dr. Azem, thank you very much for joining us this Always evening. Always a pleasure. Always, Always a, a pleasure, pleasure. sir. Uh, Dr. Azem, now, we always talk about industries, uh, research and development, innovation and technology and everything, and now the, the new national initiative start uh, should be helping the localization of industries, really trying to boost the local industry here in Egypt. The whole world, including Egypt, is suffering from inflation, high prices, uh, economic crisis as a result of uh, the Russia-Ukraine conflict following a coronavirus pandemic. Now, focusing on START, how is this initiative um, helping the localization of industries? How is it helping investors really delving into and embarking on the market and working on a flourishing economy? Uh, thank you for this question. Uh, and for sure, uh, the pandemic, uh, the coronavirus, and the Ukrainian crisis uh, taught us a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Taught us that the globalization concept is becoming questionable is becoming doubtful. Uh, however, if you need to build a resilient economy, you need to have a resilience on the local level and on the in regional level, then going internationally. Uh, unfortunately, because of the globalization, uh, everything was decentralized and uh, uh, everyone is dependent on it, everyone. Mm -hmm. And you don't have the food supply chain within 
your country or within your region. Uh, that's why most of the policymakers are considering the concept of globalization, going into nationalization and regionalization, then going to globalization, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why this is the importance of having a, an initiative like START or IBDA to have a new breed of small and micro enterprises. By the way, small and micro enterprises are representing like 90% of the enterprises. 40% uh, of the global GDP and 50% of employment. So they are the main driver of any economy here in Egypt or in advanced economy like uh, the US or in Europe or in China. Most of the economies are totally dependent on small and micro enterprises. Mm -hmm. But however, which small micro enter enterprises they need to ha we, we need to have SMEs or small micro enterprises that are capable to produce quality products or services that match the international needs. Uh, because actually quality is not something you can compromise in 21st yeah. century economy. You are not be happy if you are producing uh, something that not meeting the international taste. Uh, or matching the international standard because the, the market is open at the end of the day and thanks to the technology and thanks to the e-commerce platform mm -hmm. everything is available for everyone from all over the world from any place from all over the world as well so the importance of having quality products coming from small and micro, uh, micro enterprises or small and medium enterprises as well that are connected to a larger players within a value chain. What This was called a cluster, building a cluster. Mm -hmm. Clustering is having a group of entities, that including the government, the research institution, uh, the, the, ind the major uh, industry players, uh, small and micro enterprises, uh, the local administrative uh, authorities, within a system, within an ecosystem to serve a specific competitive edge. For example, if you look at Egypt, mm -hmm. for example, if you look, if you are seeing Upper Egypt uh, as a region, uh, one of the great things in Upper Egypt is the medical and aromatic plants. Mm -hmm. This is a 100 billion uh, US dollar industry. So if you need, you have a quality raw material, you have quality produce. However, you don't have the higher value mm -hmm. because most of the export is in a format of raw materials, which is the least of any value chain. For if you need to do something like this, you need to study the competitive edge of this region and build the cluster around this competitive edge. So this will include companies, multinationals, mm -hmm. having uh, the know-how of uh, mass production and they are connected to smaller local industry players who are providing uh, not a raw material but a processed raw material, for example. And you need to have farmers and you need to have uh, workers, you need to have R&D facilities and R&D institutions that are investing time and money in improving the overall quality of mm -hmm. this product or service uh, to keep the competitive edge because if you are not investing in R&D, actually R&D is not is becoming part of the cost of the business by the way. Uh, the world is spending like 3 trillion US dollars yearly on R&D, 70% are coming from industry and the private sector, uh, not the classical uh, notion that uh, R&D is the responsibility of government, this is not mm -hmm. the, the case by the way, all over the world, 70% is coming uh, as fund from the private sector to improve the quality of their products and services and to keep a distance between the, this industry or the players within this industry and their competitors. Mm -hmm. So this is, within a cluster, there is room for everyone. There is room for large players, there is room for uh, small enterprises, there is room for micro enterprises, there is room for medium enterprises. Every part within or every player within this cluster would have a role, all connected, all together. Based on that, you can boost the productivity, you can boost your exports, you can mm -hmm. boost 
uh, your competitiveness uh, uh, factors, you can boost your exports towards having a better uh, trade balance, which yes. is the ultimate goal of any government by the world, all over the world. Mm -hmm. So uh, <coughs> if we can do this and base on small and, micro, um, and medium enterprises within a cluster, I think we'll, we'd have a great success in this domain because one of the great things uh, in Egypt is the market size. We are mm -hmm. more than 100 million uh, population. This is a huge market. And the real market of Egypt is almost 2 billion because Egypt has a lot of uh, f um, free trade agreements with many regions and many countries all over the world. Mm -hmm. uh, That's including Comessa, including uh, euro mediterranean Partnership, including uh, the Arab region. So it's uh, the, the market there and the market is always the most uh, valuable asset within any business. Yes. We are looking definitely for the market. That's why by having this kind of clustering mm -hmm. based on the local competitiveness edge, uh, then you can think of replacing imports. And then you think of producing things or products and services that will be required by the international market and according to the taste of the international yes. market mm -hmm. and according to the quality because quality as i said you cannot compromise quality in 21st century uh, economy by, by all means yes dr azem now like you're saying um if we are aiming to uh, aiming for the highest sort of uh, qualities and standards because everyone now wouldn't compromise or wouldn't settle for less now, you've mentioned the importance of research and development, R&D, which is probably uh, what makes or breaks a project or what makes or breaks uh, a product or an SME. Now, for an, uh, an entrepreneur who will, for instance, take part in the START National Initiative, they might not have their own research and development department and they might carry out some research and development but it would be very primitive and preliminary not well studied or thought of would this allow maybe private uh, sector companies within this initiative and within this platform to maybe lend a helping hand or maybe if they do like the idea or the 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 proposal of a certain project or uh, an entrepreneur that they would maybe incubate this SME this project and maybe lend them their own R&D or lend them some of their results and research to help boost the chances of this SME uh, thank you for this uh, uh, proposition actually mm -hmm. this is what makes the difference uh, if you look at the Chinese example, if you look at the Cambodian example, if you look at the Asian t tigers, even if you look at how an economy like the U.S. economy becoming the first uh, economy all over the world and becoming the uh, leading economy, this is actually what's happening. Mm -hmm. If you need to have successful startup ecosystem, you need to link them with other players within the ecosystem. That's including the major players, the industry, main industry players, because they have challenges and they are not, they cannot solve their challenges most of the time by themselves, mm -hmm. which represents an opportunity for the startup community to step in and to propose a solution, an innovative solution for this kind of challenges. And one of these challenges is the climate change mm -hmm. or transforming the industry into green industries. This is amount, I would say, $2.2 trillion investment in the few coming years. And the large industry players are quite keen to invest this amount of money. And most of this money will go to developing countries, not the developed countries, mm -hmm. which a huge opportunity for a country like Egypt because we have the brains. Mm -hmm. And this is the role also, not only the role of the startups or the role of the industry players, it's the role of the R&D institutions, like the universities, the research centers, to step in and to have a collaborative work all together for having a sort of applied research, not the basic research, applied research, for having a solution for a certain challenge or mm -hmm. certain set of challenges mm -hmm. then converting this 
applied research into technology and then converting this technology into a product or a service that has a sort of economic or social impact. This is what's called innovation. This is the real innovation. So if we would have this in mind, if we can plan for the future, especially in the domain of the green transformation of different industries, like especially the industries that has a sort of higher mm -hmm. carbon footprint, um, the um, uh, energy industry, yes. the uh, cement energy, uh, cement industry, the housing, the real estate industry, uh, the chemicals industry, uh, we uh, the textile as well. Textile industry by itself is like a 500 billion US dollar industry size, and if you come up with new innovative solutions that would sell would sorry it would help this industry to have a sort of green transformation or uh, getting uh, less carbon uh, footprint definitely will get investment definitely you will have uh, a huge investment in, in this domain definitely you can have your startup community would be able to become a international player mm -hmm. and they could be uh, have a sort of acquisition by the major SNC player, and this is the game by this, mm -hmm. the, the, the most of the successful startups, uh, uh, the most successful game is to get, uh, to have a sort of acquisition by uh, industry player and mm -hmm. having this industry player uh, having a sort of also of incubating the startup and to leverage their competitiveness to, to invest in their R&D, to invest in developing their product technology and their production technology and this is a green area and this is a green field um, and I think most of the countries all over the world will have a, a great focus on having a sort of uh, green transformation for the major indices mm -hmm. according to uh, 2050 agenda and we've s we witnessed this during the COP 27 mm -hmm. uh, that took place last month in, in Charm Sheikh and I I I've seen CEOs of the top fortune 500 uh, uh, companies sitting in Charm Sheikh and they are making commitment to have this sort <coughs> of investment mm -hmm. into the green transformation this is another opportunity and we need to work on it from today Yes. Well, sir, now you took part uh, in the, the COP27 and you've, you've met and you've, uh, I mean, you attended the, the, the meetings and the conferences with some of the CEOs of the biggest energy uh, corporations around the world. And you've pointed out that everyone's really looking at the green transformation, the green economy, the, the, uh, the green energy. Egypt is trying to really become an energy hub uh, mm -hmm. in its own right. Now, it seems very uh, ambitious or far-fetched or complicated for an uh, entrepreneur, the youth, trying to break into the, the green transformation uh, field, uh, for instance, through Start National Initiative, trying to get connected to these big players, uh, as you've mentioned. How can someone who is very ambitious, who really has the enthusiasm, who really wants to take the big risks, delve and uh, really try and penetrate such what seems to be uh, like a very complicated and far-fetched sector, but it is the direction that not just Egypt is going for, but the whole world, as you've mentioned? Uh, definitely, this is not an easy task mm -hmm. uh, to tackle. This is. Uh, something you need to work for it that uh, you need uh, to have uh, connection with uh, such uh, big players and uh, and you need to have someone help you to open the doors for you and this is the role of the government uh -huh. and this is the role of the ngos that are responsible uh, for such startups and we have many organizations here in Egypt working with the startups and they have the connections with the industry players and if they see a great product or service and a great innovation that would help this this is very easy to con to be connected with the uh, with the uh, industry players yes. and to introduce such innovation to, for them so it's not as hard as it seems but mm -hmm. however you need to have a real innovation 
not what do you think it's an innovation so real innovation is based on having appropriate technologies are solving a specific problem and has economic or social or environmental impact mm -hmm. if you have this secret formula if you have this magic formula definitely you will have a footprint in the not only on the local market not only on the regional market but also on the international uh, market and we have a lot of programs to help startups and taking startups to international uh, events in Europe, in the United States, and this is the major uh, technology events that are taking place uh, either in Europe or in the United States, and there is a window to showcase the Egyptians' uh, innovation in these uh, kind of uh, international arenas and to show this innovation to the decision makers within the industry players and so if you have something you will have a way to deliver this something mm -hmm. to the inter international market and definitely this would uh, help you to attract more investment or to be have a sort of acquisition by uh, one of the mega international players to be incubated mm -hmm. there and to be part of the big uh, operation of their big operation so but you need to develop a real innovation first. Yes. Uh, and this is not easy because the competition is severe, as you said, mm -hmm. and everyone is working. Uh, so you cannot depend on your own resources as a startup to develop uh, your uh, innovation. You need to have a sort of allies with you. You need mm -hmm. to have a sort of relation and collaboration with R&D institution with research-based universities. You need to have a sort of connection with the government. It is that taking care of the startup community. You need to work with the uh, international uh, players mm -hmm. as well. You need to knock doors. So uh, yes. it's not uh, an easy formula. However, the most important element with this formula is to have a real innovation that based on superior technology solving in an innovative way a challenge or yes. a problem and of course the more problems you have the more challenges you have the more room for innovation and there's always be a room for innovation yes dr azam now you've mentioned the importance of um, having a proper innovation well thought of uh, competitive the research and development as well and you've mentioned that through such uh, a platform it is possible to get a helping hand either from universities or the private sector or governmental institutions. Now, assuming that we do have the good innovation, we could have a proper research and development and uh, a good plan to execute all these uh, ideas and translate them and implement, uh, implement them into uh, a tangible product or a tangible service. It needs financing. Now, how can such an initiative help with the financing? The first, the first um, player to look at for, uh, for financing would be the private sector, but then the challenge would be, <clears throat> would the private sector finance the idea for free? Would they uh, want a share of uh, the project, uh, the, the, the management of it, the, uh, the whole business and investment of it? Would they actually want to buy the SME as a whole? How would this work, the financing aspect of uh, the SMEs? We don't have a problem with finance anymore. Mm -hmm. Maybe this in the past, maybe this is 10 years ago. However, today we don't have the, the problem. Each startup starts with self-finance, what's called family and friends. Mm -hmm. Then comes the stage of what's called angel investor. Angel investor is an investment or coming from individuals uh, rather than family and friends and invest against having uh, equity within the new venture. Mm -hmm. Then it comes the VCs or the venture capitalists. The venture capitalists taking higher equity but putting different uh, investment tickets. Then it comes the larger enterprise investment. Mm -hmm. uh, this is totally different game. Uh, and always the government represents the seed money to start the engine, mm -hmm. uh, besides family and friends. So the seed 
fund is not necessarily financial funds, but also it includes technical support, availing co-working spaces, availing uh, technical facilities, availing uh, uh, indirect funds from other different governmental entities to invest in R&D uh, as part of uh, the yes. finance. And mm -hmm. this, of course, uh, in this finance, there is no return for government, uh, direct return, I mean. Mm -hmm. They are not taking equity. Government does not take equity from startups. But this is the role of mainly of the government is to having a sort of seed finance. Sometimes it could be fine financial uh, finance mm -hmm. uh, in dollars and most of the time is not only dollar uh, money or mm -hmm. the, the value in dollars but also it includes non-financial support training uh, exposing mm -hmm. uh, such startups to international uh, investment community by taking such startups into roadshows in the United States and in Europe in mm -hmm. the most prestigious, most uh, uh, appealing, or the most uh, famous uh, events in this uh, uh, countries. Mm -hmm. So we have different. It's a, it's a, actually it's a combination of things. It's not only the finance, the financial thing is, but mm -hmm. also it, the technical support, the mentorship, uh, uh, showcasing uh, such innovation to the international uh, community, attracting more uh, VCs uh, to the country, uh, uh, allowing more uh, formation of uh, angel investment networks. And this is what makes uh, really things uh, uh, boost, in, uh, especially in the technology startup arena. Yes. And ladies and gentlemen, as Dr. Azam uh, has mentioned, the government and President Abdel Fattah Sisi has actually mentioned that the government is willing to cooperate and help with the investors in terms of localizing their products and their industries within the Start National Platform and Initiative. Let's check out this report and we'll be right back. President Afatah Sisi said the government is ready to enter into partnership with the investors in projects of the National Initiative for Industrial Development Start. President Sisi further said Egypt is encouraging the manufacturing investors and bring them reassurance the country supports them. He added that the state can get into partnership with the initiative with shares range between 30 to 50 percent or much more to reassure the industry men in Egypt that the country bears some risks. The president elaborated that the initiative targets manufacturing products or production inputs that the Egyptian market needs them, adding that there are products and supplies lists that the country used to import for a long time, and these lists are available at the ministries of Industry, Finance, Central Bank of Egypt. He stressed the significance of taking into consideration the feasibility studies made by experts for the unfamiliar projects while other familiar projects as the imported machineries and raw materials there is no need to waste time on such studies which are well known present cc pledged to provide the investors in those projects with natural gas and electricity in prices much lower than its actual ones the head of state directed to grant the golden license to all investors for three months to facilitate procedures establishing priority projects for the country the golden license will grant investors approval to buy rent lands and operate and manage projects without the need to gain approval from multiple government bodies the licensing window can be extended for an additional three months president cc pointed out that the situation will be evaluated after three months and if the system succeeds it would continue the president noted that the past three years had witnessed great challenges and crises, but this reality is the most prominent opportunity that must be taken advantage of. He said that Decent Life Initiative would cost around £1 trillion as it would continue replacement and maintenance operations in the coming years. He called on industrialists not to worry about their products in this regard, stressing that the state is committing to supporting business people. President Sisi stressed the necessity of accelerating the pace of work to achieve a development boom and make the people feel prosperous. He added that trade conflict at the world level shows the scale of international transformations 
The president pointed out that coronavirus pandemic and the Russian-Ukrainian crisis led to the restructure of industrial complexes that had been formed over the past years. President Sisi highlighted the country's advantages, such as its geographical location, energy pricing, skilled labor, and state facilities. The president has inaugurated a number of projects from the National Initiative for Industrial Development or START Initiative. He also urged expanding exploration of more fields of industry localization, especially with regard to the infrastructure projects given the huge and numerous projects nationwide. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, continuing our discussion with uh, Dr. Azem. A few things we want to uh, talk about. Um, first off, now whenever we get anything done here in Egypt and uh, a lot of foreign investors and a lot of uh, local investors, everyone always talks about the bureaucracy and red tape and all the different procedures. Now, the president said that in this initiative, a golden license would be granted that would just leapfrog all of these uh, bureaucratic steps. Can you shed light on such a license that should be lasting for about three months, I mm -hmm. think? And uh, what sort of energy and time and money does it save and can it help the SMEs moving forward? Eradicating uh, bureaucracy red tape is uh, on the top of uh, the agenda of the Egyptian government. It is very obvious. Uh, because actually we need to get rid of this kind of doing business. And again, this would be done through the digital transformation. Having or applying for having a license for your service or your work or your startup or your small venture uh, online without having an interface with the, the bureaucratic Asian system, mm -hmm. this would be uh, a great thing. So uh, it's a decision, uh, actually, and we, we have seen that we are moving forward in the, to the, this direction by having this kind of golden license, as mm -hmm. well as having a sort of automating the service for obtaining a license for your work, for mm -hmm. your venture. Yes. Uh, and of course, automation and having digitizing such service will kill bureaucracy and red tape. Uh, definitely because you cannot deal with people in this regards and no one can hinder uh, you from obtaining your license and having excuses because you are dealing with the system. As long as you are complying with the requirements of the system, the system is obliged to issue the license. So mm -hmm. it's totally uh, a sort of automation for the whole process and yes. definitely this would uh, help and push the investment climate in Egypt to uh, a different uh, area that I would say has a, a sort of uh, less uh, red tapes. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is very important because uh, investment and even innovation needs a totally different uh, environment. The, the, it needs a sort of relaxed environment yes. and a way of uh, the red tape things, a rate of bureaucratic uh, procedures. Uh, that's what c creates actually innovation. Yes. Innovation needs a space to move in. Yes. Well, sir, this initiative is the first of its kind and whenever we start something new, we get all excited and enthusiastic about it, but with every new big step, new challenges will uh, will appear down the road. Now, what sort of challenges or obstacles do you feel such an initiative could have um, in the near and far future? Uh, one of the most important challenges facing small and medium enterprises or even micro enterprises is that they don't understand the market. Mm -hmm. You need to spend time on understanding the market not focusing on marketing. Mm -hmm. Marketing, if you have a higher value product, marketing would be easier. You cannot market low value products. So you need, there's also a sort of confusion between market and marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, people think that uh, because I have a product and uh, I 
spend money on marketing on advertising then i will have sales and if i don't have the marketing i will have a fail mm -hmm. uh, this is not true actually 85 percent of the new products or services and are based on the ability of not understanding the market mm -hmm. so for uh, my advice for the early startups or the small and micro enterprises or the medium enterprises they need to spend time on understanding the market and understanding the dynamics of the market understanding uh, the ecosystem the supply chain which industry you are working and you will be part of it you need to understand the supply chain someone will take things from you so you need to show them that you have a value mm -hmm. you have a good product you have a good service that serving the needs of this cycle of this supply chain mm -hmm. uh, also you need to understand that world is changing technology yes. is altering the business models altering jobs uh, altering everything mm -hmm. so i need to keep an eye on the competition i need to understand the competition and sometimes some people uh, i've met a lot of startup they saying i don't have a competition so my answer then you don't have a market mm -hmm. there is no market for you if you don't have a competition there is no market for you maybe there is no uh, direct competition for the time being but mm -hmm. you might have a substitute you, you don't see so my advice here is to understand the competition to study the competition, to study the strengths and weaknesses of your competitor. As well, you need to have in mind that people might not use your product or service because there is a substitute, not a competition. Mm -hmm. So you need to think outside of these boundaries, of this classical boundaries, and think of the substitute, not only the direct competition. And you need to keep an eye on the technology progression because because of such technology progression, maybe today you have a product that has a market, mm -hmm. but tomorrow the technology will alter this market totally. And yes. then you'll be out of the market if you don't understand this dynamics of the technology evolution. So business is not an easy uh, job. And business, yeah. you need to be alerted all the time. You need to stand on your toes all, all yes. the time. You need to be aware of your market, you're aware of your competition, aware of the resources, aware, aware of your position within a value chain, and you work on improving or leverage your value within the value chain or the supply chain. This is very crucial and it's very important. Yes. Well, Dr. Azem, now, whenever anyone has an idea or uh, some sort of an innovation or wants to start their own company everybody gets excited but the the rate and the rate of failures and the number of uh, failures are way higher than the success stories that people hear of now in order not to be scared i mean business uh, in its definition is a risk taking step now, what sort of things should an entrepreneur or uh, an investor should have in mind to try as much as they can do avoid failures? Because failure is, 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 is very big, especially if you're financing it from family and friends and, um, and, and, and you're putting all your money in one basket, really, even if you've done the proper research and development, the proper financing, the proper innovative idea, studied the market, studied the competition, everything, yet the risk of failing or the probability actually of failing is very high. So what do I do as an investor, as an entrepreneur, what should I be looking for to avoid as much as possible, as much as I can, failure? Uh, thank you for this question, actually, because this is a very uh, hard question to, to answer. However, I, I need to focus on building the right team. Right mm -hmm. team will do the right product and will conduct the right business. I need to build allies. Uh, I need to have a sort of collaboration with R&D institutions with government uh, entities, with the regulators, with uh, other industry players. So I need to build allies. I need to search for 
a footprint within the market that I have a differentiation. Mm -hmm. Then I'll start from there. I cannot conquer the market once I, I introduce my products and services mm -hmm. to it. Actually, you need to have a beachhead, mm -hmm. a, a place to have a footprint in the market. Then you grow. It's actually uh, it's like the strategy of the day day uh, mm -hmm. back to the 1940s and during uh, the world uh, the World War II. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, so you need uh, to have the right team. You need to have the right alliances. You need to have a beachfront. You need to have an entry point for your market. You need to understand this. The market is very dynamic, so I need to be agile enough to respond to the market needs. Mm -hmm. uh, if I'm not responding, even at the beginning, I'm having uh, a good product or a service and I have a sort of a good sales within the market. And then I found out that there's a competition, so I need to respond to the competition quickly. Mm -hmm. I need to respond to the technological evolution quickly and adapt my uh, product and service according to the new norm not staying and within the old technology with the old business model and saying this is a problem also i need as a community uh, to understand there is a failure in everything and we need to understand or to build the culture of acceptance failure and celebrating success because mm -hmm. failures we know from failures uh, more than we know from success but my advice to the startups and the early startups especially or the small and micro enterprises you might fail and if you see you are failing, fail fast to start a new wave of uh, uh, growth uh, and building a real success next time. Yes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the perfect guest really to shed light on SMEs and the New Start National Initiative, really boosting the, the confidence for a lot of the entrepreneurs and the ventures into the SME and uh, industry market a lot to work on, a lot of research and development and innovation needs to be done, a lot of alliances as Dr. Azem has mentioned and uh, also accepting failure is part of the equation even though it's, it might not be a favorable thing for uh, many, uh, many of us and many of the investors but still it is uh, quite important, you need to fail quick to, to be able to start up again. Ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this edition of The Daily Debate. But before we go, I'd like to thank my distinguished guest, Dr. Mohamed Azem, the board member of the International Association of Technology Management. Dr. Azem, always a pleasure having you with us. Always a pleasure and honor. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, please stay tuned for more coming up on Nile International. I'm Henny Saif. Thank you for joining us.